How did Harry Reid make millions? Millions. I read somewhere the guy's net worth is like $10 million. Not too shabby, huh, Mr. Producer? And here's a guy. Last time I checked, he's white. Attacking rich white guys. I think that was a phrase he used. Rich white. Attacking himself. He's such a moron. He doesn't even realize. Hey, you're a rich white guy. Oh, excuse me. I mean, except for me. This is from uh, National Review Online, Betsy Woodruff. Here's some examples. In 2004, Harry Reid made $700,000 off a land deal that was, to say the least, unorthodox. It started in 1998 when he bought a parcel of land with attorney Jay Brown, and I'm just reading it from National Review, a close friend whose name has surfaced multiple times in organized crime investigations and whom one retired FBI agent described as, quote, always a person of interest, unquote. That's our Harry. Three years after the purchase, Reed transferred his portion of the property to Patrick Lane LLC, a holding company Brown controlled. But Reed kept putting the property on his financial disclosures. When the company sold it in 2004, he profited from the deal. A deal on land that he didn't technically own, and that had nearly tripled in value in six years. When his 2010 challenger, Sharon Angle, asked him in a debate how he became so wealthy, he said, I did a very good job investing. Well, did he ever? On December 20, 2005, he invested $50,000 to $100,000 in the Dow Jones U.S. Energy Sector Fund, IYE, which closed that day at $29.15. Now, the companies whose shares it held included ExxonMobil, ooh, big oil, Chevron, Texaco, Conoco Phillips. When he made a partial sale of his shares on August 19, 2008, during congressional recess, IYE, that's the fund, closed at $41.82. Remember, he invested when it was $29.15, it closed at $41.82. Just one month later, on September 17, Reed was working to bring to the floor a bill that the Joint Committee on Taxation said would cost oil companies, including those in his own fund, billions of dollars in taxes and regulatory fees. The bill passed a few days later, and by October 10, the fund shares had fallen by 42%, $24 down to $24.41. But Reed made out like a bandit, you see, because he sold partial sale at $41.82. The point being, Reed knew when to sell because he knew when he'd be pushing for a bill that would damage the oil companies. Here's another example. The Los Angeles Slimes reported in November 2006, Reed had managed to get $18 million set aside to build a bridge across the Colorado River between Lachlan, Nevada and Bullhead City, Arizona, a project that was not a priority for either state's transportation agency. Now, Reed's ownership of 160 acres of land nearby that stood to appreciate considerably from the project had nothing to do with the decision, according to one of his aides. The property's value had varied between 250000 to 500000 The Open Secrets website now lists it at his most valuable asset, worth $1 million to $5 million as of 2010. Some bridge, huh, ladies and gentlemen? That was not a bridge to nowhere. That was a bridge to riches for Harry Reid. And how Reid acquired this land is very interesting, too. He put $10,000 into a pension fund his friend... Claire Haycock controlled, to take over the 160-acre parcel at a price far below its assessed value. Six months later, Reed introduced legislation that would help Haycock's industry, a move many observers said appeared to be a quid pro quo, though Reed and Haycock denied that legislation was the result of a property deal. So really, Reed put $10,000 into this pension fund, and the land is valued at between $1 and $5 million in 2010. Yeah, the millionaires and the billionaires. Rich white guys advising Romney. How about the rich white millionaires and billionaires advising Obama? Like Harry Reid. What about that, Torre, whose name from now on will be Tourette's? How about that, MSLSD's Tourette's? And I don't mean that as racial coding either. I mean it as to call you out as the a-hole that you are. Now let me do something, Harry, the... Boxer, Reed. Oh, he was a boxer one day. Tough guy. 
uh, doesn't have the courage to do it. You see, when Harry Reid speaks on the floor of the Senate, he can say anything. He has immunity under the Constitution from defamation laws. Now, of course, I'm not speaking from the floor of the Senate. I'm not an elected senator or congressman. I don't have immunity. Therefore, I want to say to Harry Reid, you're a sleazeball. You may well be a crook. And you really ought to explain all these land swaps and these other deals you've been involved in, or the people have the right to at least believe you're a crook. Now, although I'm a public figure, which makes it a very, very high threshold, Harry, you can sue me, perhaps, if you want to. But then I'm going to depose you in a counterclaim, and I will depose all your friends, and we'll get to the bottom of your wealth. See how it works, Harry? You're a lawyer. You understand what I'm talking about, Harry, don't you? Because once we're in a courtroom, or the matter's in a courtroom, discoveries then possible. So I just read these things from National View Online that makes you sound like a complete sleazeball, and it certainly makes it sound like you came by a lot of your money in a very dishonest, if not worse, way. And since you're very, very secretive about your own finances, how you came to be as wealthy as you are, and since that's so important to you, and to, uh, and to uh, President Obama, I'm sure that you're going to reveal all kinds of information about yourself, aren't you, Harry? All your associations with this, this other guy that they talk about who's always a person of interest. Your little land swaps, Harry. Your little investments and then the timing of your legislative proposals, Harry. Yeah, you need a good anal exam under the Obamacare program, certainly not by me. Unless it's legal. So, Harry, you're protected. I'm not protected. What are you going to do about it? I'm just curious. 